Welcome to the channel. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Join me on today's video where I will be reviewing whatever the hell is inside this big ass box. Now this watch is sent in to me from the Andaya store and you know what? I just want to talk about the box that they sent it in. This is the biggest, most steadiest box I've ever looked at, I've ever received. This thing looks like it's absolutely bomb proof, EMP proof, waterproof. It's even got some kind of valve on there. I mean, it's the kind of box, if I were to walk around the seat center with this, I'd definitely get arrested, if not shot, to say the least. Now, as I said, this was sent in to me by the Andaya watch store. Uh, it is something which I actually requested because I've been looking at this watch for a while. It's nothing overly spectacular. It is something quite plain. Let's open the box out. It is a watch that's featured on the store called the Special Army Military Official. So it is a military spec uh, slash field watch of some sort. Uh, and I was really interested in it because it just I liked how plain and simple it looked. And in the pictures, at least, it looked pretty well finished. So I've got it in hand um, and I have unwrapped it, etc. I did have received this a few weeks ago uh, and it looks OK. Um, as I said, tool like watch, you know, really nice brushing, etc. Some of the features I do really like, like the handset and the dial setup. Get into all the other details just in a little while. Let's see what else we have inside the box. Uh, you have this rubber uh, leatherette tag attached to the, the watch, bunch of foam in there, um, a movement manual, and then of course you've got a, another manual and a warranty card telling you how to do all sorts of stuff on there. You also get a resizing tool and a cleaning cloth. I'll be keeping that for later. You can never have too many of those. But yeah, the rest is just loads of foam. Uh, yeah, loads of foam, loads of foam. I mean, let's put it this way. I've at least got a very solid little toolbox to keep all my little bits and bobs in. Now let's have a look at this watch. Quickly, on wrist, I'm wearing the San Martin uh, SNO, whatever. It's a sumo homage. But this watch in particular is on sale on the Andaya store. Now, the Andaya store I have visited quite frequently. It's the store that bought us the Sieg Flammer watches, uh, the Decipher watch, uh, amongst others. They do have a few quirky little watches. Uh, I actually got those uh, vintage Chinese watches from there as well. So I'll leave the link within the description. Please check them out. Now, the watch is for sale for around £160, which is around $210. But they have provided a $20 discount should you choose to purchase this watch. And it only applies to this watch. Uh, and the code is the watch at 20 and you get $20 off, not including any taxes. Let's give you a run through on the specifications. So as you can see, it is a full 316L stainless steel construction on the case, bezel, crown and the case back and the bracelet. You do have a sapphire crystal. You've got a screw down case back, a screw down crown, giving you 100 meters of water resistance. Um, the watch does run the Miyota 8215 movement. Now the movement in this watch is currently running at plus 15 seconds a day with a very healthy amplitude of 270 degrees uh, with a B error of 0.5 to 0.6, which is slightly high, um, but it is running very similar to a Seiko NH35. The only difference with this movement is that you've got the indirect um, drive, I believe, or the direct drive. And what that basically means is you'll see the second hand start to slip. So let's have a quick look at that. You see that? The second hand is a bit jittery. Um, it starts to actually drop down and it looks like you're missing a few seconds. The first time I ever saw this movement, I was like, how is this keeping accurate time if the second hand is jumping around so much? So sometimes you'll see it slow down. Sometimes you'll see it speed up. Sometimes you just see it drop <laughs> down to the bottom. Um, but yeah, that is a symptom of this movement. And apparently it was quite common on the older movements. Um, but in terms of accuracy, it is as accurate uh, as Seiko movements. They can also be regulated, um, but they don't hack. They do hand wind. You do have a date function, but like I said, you don't have the hacking capability built into this movement. And in terms of uh, dimensions, you do have a 40 millimeter case with a 38 millimeter bezel. You've got a 12 mil thickness. You do have a log to log of 49 millimeters, but because you've got male end links on the bracelet, that does kind of bring it out to 53 millimeters overall. You've got a 20 millimeter log width. The bracelet tapers down to 18 millimeters. The overall weight of the watch is 143 grams with zero links removed. And you've got a small six millimeter crown. Now you're probably wondering why I went for this watch. You know, the thing that drew me to it is uh, that dial first and foremost, you know, this glossy black somber dial. And second to that, the batons. I do like baton hour markers and baton shape hands. That is what drew me to the watch initially. Now, aside from that, the K shape also drew me to this. You know, it's got a very nice, cushion style case shape. Um, I really like how flat it is on the logs, you know, that surface area that you see. It's a very toned down watch. 
um, nothing too extravagant uh, and it is finished really well the dial is a mixture of applied and printed features you've got the special army logo just below the 12 o'clock you've got special army across the top and military official inoffensive you know it's in white and it does kind of blend in and just above the six you've got automatic sapphire and the water resistance rating you also got a printed chapter ring around the dial with square markers at the five minute intervals, the baton applied indices with the polished frames with a loom in the center. You've also got a date frame. The date is central to the square and aligned. And looking at the handset, as I said, you've got a slightly chamfered baton style handset. Seconds hand is polished. And I'd say the watch has really good hand to dial proportions. You've got a flat sapphire crystal that sits very flush with no uh, obvious AR coating, so you don't get that blue hue going across this black dial. And it is a really nice black dial. It is sunburst, it gives you a nice jet black appearance. And you can't go wrong with a plain black dial, can you? Now this watch is loomed, and I'd love to see how well that is. And here is the loom, I've not hit it with no direct UV. And this is just from the lights in the room, and it is very poor loom. I don't know what color that is on the hands, very thin. Uh, and the markers on the dial aren't that much better. So this one does need a little help from the UV lamp. So with some assistance, that has brightened up a little bit. And yeah, you've got really poor loom on the dial and the hands are very thin and there's not a lot of layers applied. You can see it is quite patchy on the handset and the hour markers on the dial. Quite disappointing. Um, you know, I was expecting a little bit more than this, in all honesty. Yes, it is a field watch. Um, military watch as well so I think they could have applied just a bit more layers of loom uh, considering the price point as well so not so good in the loom department now next we've got the bezel it is a curved bezel on the watch as I said it's 38 millimeters and it is fully polished now aside from the bezel you move on to the case uh, and I do like these flat logs you've got very fine linear brushing present across the logs and you've got the same style of brushing present along the end link and that is quite nice as it makes the watch look very uniform not as fine as we've seen none of that satinized brushing um, but you can see all the grain present but the main thing is it is uniform and that then transitions into a highly polished side of the case nice curvature on the case no sharp bits nicely done and you've got a polished crown with no signage. Now the crown itself is small, it's only about six millimeters, and especially with these gloves, and that is why I hate these gloves, uh, it's quite difficult to operate, but once you get it going, it does screw in, takes a bit of effort, but I think all watch cases with these tiny crowns are slightly fidgety. Now moving on to the bracelet, I did mention it is solid end links, full solid links, it's a three link style bracelet, nicely finished, the main thing about this bracelet I have to point out is that it does have smoothed off edges. Um, they're not sharp and they're not those flat edges that you find on, for example, those Sobi homages. Um, they're quite nicely defined and you've got very smooth surface area. So it's not edgy, very nicely done. And that small detail sorts the bad bracelets to the good bracelets. You do have split pins to hold the links in. You do have a butterfly clasp. Not ideal, but what I do like about butterfly clasps is that seamless finish they give. I do like that on some watches. So this is the Special Army watch from the Andaya store on my six and a half inch wrist. And it does seem to fit really well. It hugs the wrist quite comfortably. That 40 millimeter case diameter seems to sit really nice on wrist. You've got a 49 millimeter log to log, which seems to cover that wrist space really well. Now, even though they are male end links, giving you an overall of 53 millimeters on the length, um, due to that curvature, I believe it sits really nice and I think this is the best way to show you guys why uh, I find myself drawn to this watch. I think it's that elongated case. Um, it just seems to sit really well and that seamless look on that bracelet. So I do like how that wears, I do like how it fits, it sits comfortably as well. Now moving on to summarize the positive and the negative. The first negative I have to say is the price. It is slightly overpriced at £160 with a Miyota 8215 and poor loom. Uh, you can find so many better examples. Now the second thing which is bugging me, um, you know, I don't have anything against butterfly clasps. Um, but I feel for this one, uh, it does need a different kind of clasp, like a flip lock clasp. Having said that, it's still better than those uh, milled clasps, you know, with that cheap folded um top piece 
because I don't like that anymore. Um, but yeah, I do like the seamless look, but you know, I do need something with some micro adjusts. The bracelet isn't the biggest. I took out three links. Usually I take out four to five from other bracelets. So anybody with, let's say, eight and a half inch wrist may possibly struggle. And the same goes for the movement. While I don't have anything specific against the 8215, they are actually very reliable and accurate. Um, it's a fact that the indirect drive system where you can just see that second hand just kind of take away skipping jumping that erratic behavior i don't like to see that visually the loom is really poor i also like the dial that black somber style is really nice i like the layout of the dial i like the hands and the hour markers i just don't like the loom that's been applied in there and the finishing is great and the bracelet's really nice as well so that's my thoughts on this special army watch from the andaya store if you do want to pick it up then the link is in the description you'll also see the code the watcher 20 for 20 dollars off so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next video don't forget to check out my ebay store i have left the link within the description anything from brand new watches to used watches to a whole host of accessories including straps leather silicon you name it all very reasonably priced if you do want to reach out to me for something specific then contact me on my email address which again is within the description thank you once again guys your support means everything